Welcome back to Mycology Exploration. I am the wife. And I am the husband. Thank you for subscribing, and don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when we have new videos for you. In this video, we will share water agar and why you would utilize it in home mycology. Water agar is utilized to give the mycelium a chance to grow while not competing with contamination in the growth process. It allows the mycelium the time to stretch and find nutrients. Spores are inherently dirty, so utilizing agar te techniques allow the home mycologist to clean out any contamination before moving on to the next step of grain spawning. In this video, we will show you how to make both 500 milliliters and 250 milliliters using only agar and purified water. In our last video, we shared an easy way to get started using MEA, which is a blend of malt extract powder, agar, and purified water that contains dextrose. Dextrose is a plant-based simple sugar. There are dozens of recipes for agar. However, when you break it down to the basics, it's all about nutrition and sugar. We are not talking about cane sugar. We are specifically talking about dextrose which is in most MEA blends and honey. Some use popcorn grain to create a corn syrup water known as grain water. In this video, we are utilizing water agar to complete a spore to agar transfer. Like I previously mentioned, spores are inherently dirty, so using water agar without the nutrients and sugar will rob contaminants while allowing good mycelium to grow. Our recipe uses 10 grams of agar for 500 milliliters of boiling purified water. Or you can use 5 grams of agar for 250 milliliters of water. Using 90 millimeter petri dishes, we pour 24 plates with 500 milliliters and we pour 12 plates with 250 milliliters. The size of your plate and how full you fill your plates will determine how many dishes you will create. We use a heated magnetic stir plate and boiling water with an infrared temperature gun, which we feel is vital to our process. However, you can use a stovetop and saucepan. Using boiling purified water makes the task of mixing agar without it gelling or clumping much easier. The temperature gun allows you to monitor the temperature as you do not want to overcook it. We also use the temp gun in the cooling process. Once you have allowed the agar to completely dissolve without clumping, then you're ready to sterilize in the pressure cooker. This usually takes about five minutes with the heated stir plate. You will want to pressure cook for 20 minutes at 15 PSI, then allow the bottles to cool between 140 and 120 degrees before pouring your dishes. We allow our bottles to cool while stirring on the magnetic plate with the heat off and monitor it with the temperature gun. Check out our sterilization and sanitization video for tips on how to eliminate contamination. Make sure everything is sterilized before pouring agar to plates inside a still air box. Pouring one plate at a time quickly, taking the tops off, pouring, and replacing the top before moving on. Make sure the plate you're pouring into is flat, that it's sitting on an even surface. Do not overfill and try not to shake the agar till it's completely cooled. You do not want it to splash up around the sides or onto the lid. Allow your plates to cool to room temperature. If you see condensation, just flip your plates upside down. You can even store them upside down. We recommend that you wait 24, 48, even 72 hours to make sure that your plates do not have any contamination before you use them for transfers or spores. Thank you for joining us and for subscribing. The more subs, likes, and comments, the more YouTube will share our videos with others.